Jeremy. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Let's start with, with the first month of the season. Obviously, results-wise, not where you guys wanted to be. How do you kind of make sense of the month of March? You know, uh, obviously we had goals set from the beginning of the season, what we wanted to get out of this road stretch. Uh, started off with a rocky start, but it's important to keep it in perspective as long as the habits are good uh, and, we're, and we're trying to change uh, the product on the field to get you know, the end result. I think that's what we have to look forward to. Uh, we have to learn from our past mistakes and, and the lapses of concentration, but we can't live in the past either. You know, we have to take advantage of the opportunities that we have ahead because it's been four games, what, on the road? So we have eight more to go, and that's a, that's a lot of points to be had. So there's a lot to do. Jake touched on it in the open with the goal that you scored. It's one of the better goals that you're going to see. When you look at it, all the different passes being strung together, what is going through your mind? What's your thought process as the play is developing? Yeah, it's just always about, as a forward, I always want to position myself near the box uh, to be on the end of any pass, whether it's a pass coming from, you know, 30 yards away from goal or, or right around the end line where David was. So, you know, it was just about reading that final movement, and I was lucky to be in the right place and have a perfectly weighted pelt. You see, just in this clip we're watching, Jeremy, there's players moving around you. You are making your own movements, so you're given an option all the time. But is it important for you to keep your own space and to keep out of other players' space? Definitely keep out of other players' space. That's really important to me. But the more I move, uh, the more space I create for myself to run into. So, you know, as the ball's coming out, I, I step out with the back line and create some space in between, you know, the, the goalie and where the ball came to run into. So that's important for me. How much in a goal like this, 16 passes, I think it was something like that, how much of that is, is practiced? How much of this is, is intentional um, with, with the group? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely intentional. You know, we, we want to play, we want to break lines. That's always really important. But at, at the end of the day, it's about the players uh, executing on the field and finding the right spaces and then, you know, expressing themselves creatively, creatively and, and building relationships between Valeria Guzman and Valeria and I and, and everyone else on the field. Of course, it's a team game, but there are so many individual elements that come into play. And for you now getting your second goal of the season, what does it do to you individually for confidence? Because you're a striker, you're meant to score goals and you're getting your goals. It, it helps your confidence even though results aren't going your way? Yeah, the most important thing is definitely results. But uh, as an individual, uh, I want to know that I'm doing the best I can to, to contribute to the team's efforts. And the way I'm judged primarily is going to be goals. So it's, it's definitely pleasing to see that. I've been able to get a few, but uh, I want to be able to diversify the manner in which I'm getting goals uh, and be more of a threat and, and an asset in the attack. So I think there's still plenty of work to be done for, for myself. What's the difference in your approach when you compare it to last year where you were maybe third in the pecking order behind Fernando Adi, Samuel Armenteros, whereas now coming into preseason, you're looked upon as the main man and we need you to score goals. You're going to be in there around Valeria and, and Blanco and the guys uh, that are going forwards. What does that do for your approach and, and confidence knowing all eyeballs are on you? Well, I think most importantly is there's competition within our squad and, and that motivates me just knowing that the next guy is always ready to step up and, yeah. and I want to make sure that I'm putting my best foot forward to, to stay in a similar position to, to be on the field. But for, after that, it's, it's mostly about keeping the same habits, uh, working as hard as I used to after practice to make sure I'm getting all the reps that I possibly can so that I'm as sharp as I might have been a year ago when, when I was waiting in the wings. The last thing I want to do is take my foot off the gas, get comfortable, think that I'm the starter and, and I'm a rock, but, but then lose it because I got complacent. I think you know a lot of guys get very complacent when things start to go their way, and that ultimately becomes their downfall. Jeremy, take it on San Jose this week after they've had four losses, conceded 14 goals. Good time to play them? Yeah, I think uh, it's obviously a good time to play them, but at the same time, you have to respect what they're trying to do and, and understand where they're coming from. You know, we were in the same position last year, hiring a new coach and, and getting used to his philosophy and hit a little bit of a learning curve that first month of the year. And once we figured it out, it was, you know, we were fearsome. Like, no team wanted to play us. It was really tough to play against us. And, you know, with San Jose, it's when are they going to hit that point if, if that's that's where they're heading. So we can't be any, any more complacent. Uh, it, the second we become complacent is when, you know, the result continues with uh, what we've had the last month. So, you know, it's, and at the same time, they're, they're looking at us and they're saying, you know, this team hasn't put up many win any wins, many points, conceded a lot of goals. So, you know, I think we don't have the fear factor right now that we want to have. 
and they're not going to respect us, so they're going to come in and think that they can win. I don't want you to give away any of your secrets with the tactics of how you're going to go about playing against the center backs, but is there a particular way that you can play up against a team like this that do like to man mark and an idea in your mind where you can go and find space that's different than what you would say the conventional style of structure of a team? If I'm being honest, I think it's about just fluidity in our movement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times it's about being a focal point of the attack and, and remaining in a certain position. But I think in this game, it's going to be just, yeah, just being fluid with our movements and having good relationships and moving the ball, all the things that we want to do in, in every single game. But just we need to emphasize on this game because there's, there's a big opportunity to, to be had if we play well. Away from the Timbers, big offseason for you. You made your U.S. national team, senior team, debut in, in January. What was that experience like and, and what did you learn from it? Uh, you know, there's some highs and lows from my 16 staples in my head, but um, <laughs> in the end, it was really memorable. Uh, there were a lot of us young guys who were getting our first taste of senior international football, and, and that was something that, you know, you dream of as a kid, and you're going to remember, regardless of what happens the rest of your career, uh, as an individual and as an ambitious individual, it's given me a taste of, of what I want out of my career. And so, you know, a lot of steps to become a a senior regular but you know I think I'm on the right path and if I keep the right habits and hopefully then I'll I'll be fighting for a spot there you're getting your first taste Greg Berhalter then Jason Christ Jason Christ newly appointed for the U23's men's national team what is that relationship like and what's different between these two managers and the ideas that you're able to receive yeah it's a little bit tough just because the U23 camp was was really short uh, we only had about three sessions before our game and then we had two games so uh, from that regard, it was challenging to implement the style of play that we wanted to, but we definitely took some big strides. You know, we lost at Egypt 2-0 the first game, which was disappointing. A few lapses and a few mistakes, which unfortunately is a lot, a theme that I've seen a lot. Um, but the second game against Holland, you know, we played a, a strong game, tied them 0-0, missed four clear chances, I would say. Uh, so th there's positives to take from that. And, you know, in trying to implement the, the full team system, uh, we found a little bit of success, but we've also found some success being malleable and, and being able to move in and out of, of that system to, to be tricky to other teams.